This is a follow-up to my video about the Siemens and Halsker Morse telegraph machine of 1852 that was used in the Crimean War. It's going to move on to demonstrate the Wexton high-speed Morse telegraph system developed 15 years later and seen here. To wrap up the Crimean telegraph machine, I was trying to show whether it could print at 300 letters per minute. Here it is printing at low speed, 60 letters per minute. After more tests, I decided I'd been on the wrong track. Werner Siemens never intended this machine to print at 300 letters per minute. What he hoped was that his transmitter, which read Morse off a paper tape, would transmit at that speed. There was no way this machine could keep up. My guess is that human operators could copy it down at that speed. The best I managed was a rather fuzzy SOS at about 250 letters per minute. OK, you could decipher it if it repeated over and over, but it's not a realistic test because they're rather simple letters. In any case, this model did not originally use ink. It was an embosser, scratching marks on tape, which must have been much harder to read. So can the 1852 Siemens transmitter go faster? Unfortunately, there seems to be no known example of that machine. But in exploring early tape transmitters, I came across Professor Wetston's high-speed Morse telegraph system, which was claimed to both transmit and print at 500 letters per minute in 1867. The Whetstone system uses a family of three machines. On the right, the tape perforator, in the middle, the tape reader transmitter, and on the left, the receiver printer. This video will show the transmitter in action. There's a shelf on one side that the perforated tape, known as the slip, passes along from right to left, pulled by that little slotted wheel. Inside, you can see that it was originally driven by a chain and weights, like the Siemens and Halsker. These are missing, but the chain sprockets and winder are still there, which is unusual because most were converted to run off big external electric motors. At the other end, there's a speed limiter, parts of which are missing. Fortunately, this gives me room to install a small electric motor running at 9600 RPM and driving the mechanism from the high speed end of the gear train. The slotted wheel drives the slip with the help of a star wheel, which you can see turning underneath. Look at the two pins, called prickers, that probe for holes in the slip. When they find holes, the back one turns the current on, the front one turns it off. You'll see that the back one is to the right of the front one, so if the tape has two holes in line, the signal stays on for an interval, making a dot. The speed of the tape determines the element duration. Through a series of levers, the prickers activate a rocker switch. This is a mechanical device that desperately wanted to be a digital electronic computer in 1867. This is the rocker switch when I received the machine. When you run the machine without the slip, it produces a series of dots. I hadn't yet regulated the levers properly at this time, but you can see the bottom lever pushing the switch off. To prepare a slip, I started with this wonderful Creed keyboard perforator, which was made, I think, in the 1940s. It uses the Wetston two-level code, which continued from 1867 right up to the end of the Morse code era. I know next to nothing about Morse code and I wanted to see how it would punch a repeated letter A, which is a dot dash. As you see, the dot is two holes in the same column and the dash is a start followed by a stop one column later, then an empty column for the space between letters. I chose this short letter so it would show up on the oscilloscope and also be easily heard. The paper is thin and got a bit chewed up in the transmitter, so I made another one on the Wetston manual perforator using strips of heavier A4 paper. Werner Siemens claimed that Wetston copied this punch from his, but I think there's a major difference. Photos and drawings suggest that the Siemens punch and transmitter only used one row of data holes and no sprocket hole. If that's right, this two-level code is Wetston's invention and far superior, as one would expect after 15 years of progress in such a lucrative technology. The left button is the dot and the right a dash. The middle one punches a sprocket hole only, i.e. a space. I glued the ends of the slip together, making an endless loop of Morse code A's, each one a dot and a dash followed by the interletter space, and put it on the transmitter. Opening the throttle is like starting the takeoff roll on a jumbo jet. I captured the Morse signal on scope, connecting it across the telegraph signal output terminal. There you see a dot element, followed by an intra character space of the same duration, followed by a dash, which is three dots long as prescribed, followed by an inter-character space of three dots in length. The dot is about one division wide on the scope, which as you see is 20 milliseconds. That makes 50 elements per second, which would be about 300 average length. 
Morse code letters per minute. This could almost be the output of an electronic circuit. My little 6 volt motor won't run any faster, but I'm sure the transmitter could send a Morse at 500 letters per minute, faster than a human operator could write it down. In my next video, I'll see whether Professor Wetstone's receiver can print that fast, as it was claimed to do. Click the red button to subscribe, and the like button if you enjoyed the video. Hope to see you again soon.